Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news, looking at the latest goings on in Star Citizen with a quick summary of the week ending the 27th of January 2019. There's only been a light amount of roadmap updates this week. Nothing slipped from the Persistent Universe. Character customization, group improvements version 4, distortion damage improvements, vehicle scanning improvements, and vehicle tech updates v1 have all made notable progress, as has Arc Corps Moons, Walla and Lyria. For some reason here I've got Walla and Yala written down though. I know it's not that. Uh, while the female character model has had some additional tasks added as well, which basically has made it slip in progress, but uh, it's just them identifying extra bits that they need to do for that feature. On the Squadron 42 side, FPS, First Person Shooter Collision Avoidance V2, has been removed from the schedule, uh, assumedly to be rescheduled for later. Star Citizen Alpha 3.4.3 is out to live. It is a little more crashy than previous builds, at least for me. Typically, you can use the rejoin feature, though, to get back onto your server. From the newsletter, all backers with a game package have access to the Gladius Valiant for this weekend. I mistook this for a free flight event where, in fact, it's actually just players that already have game packages are able to try that Gladius Valiant for free. Uh, there is an associated screenshot competition for the Gladius Valiant. It's all about flying in formation and getting cool formation flying pictures. Uh, if you're interested in that, I will link that in the description below. February's RSI subscribership is going to be the Hawk. Uh, so that should be pretty cool for people that want to try that out. Star Citizen has received over $215 million in crowdfunding. And there's a little bit of flair that they're giving to Packers that pledged before $200 million. Um, before that funding mark, they're going to receive a in-game challenge coin piece of flair. The sneak peek for this week looks like UIs, user interfaces for elevators. So we have more appropriate interaction with elevators or lifts that have more than just a couple of destinations. In a thought might not be appropriate for that, but a full UI system where they can clicky clicky uh, may well be, especially when we have physicalized addresses for Habs, for example, uh, in a big Hab block, you're going to want to be able to visit your friend. The Daymar Rally is live this Sunday. It's going to be streamed and it's going to be heavily recorded. It's a 300 kilometer fan event rally in cyclones, bikes or rovers uh, around the Daymar, uh, the event starts at 6 p.m. UTC. You can watch it live at twitch.tv forward slash Daymar Rally. I suspect there will be a lot of other streamers covering it as well. I'm planning to participate and record what I can. Uh, however, it is going to be more as comic relief rather than trying. I mean, I'm going to try hard. Don't, don't get me wrong, but me trying hard is not necessarily going to be good. Um, there is also an RSI competition for a two-minute Tumbrel Cyclone commercial. I suspect we'll see some pretty good footage coming out of the Daymar Rally for that as well. Again, I'll put the link down below for everything I just discussed. I'm going to also be getting a video up on Game Glass later today. This was previously known as SC Pad. It's a program allowing touchscreen devices, from phones to Kindles to laptops, to be used as physical MFDs and control devices for Star Citizen and now other games as well. There's going to be a free version with a load of Star Citizen functionality, but they're also going to be taking donations and subscriptions for a more supported product with more functionality, basically, and lots of additional bits that you can add to it. It's quite modular. Check out their website, uh, gameglass.gg, and their Indiegogo to learn more, or check out my video on this later today. I'm assuming I'll get that out. Uh, around the verse stuff, let's go for a quick summary of that. The new flight model has had some iterations based on feedback from CitizenCon 2018 attendees. They've reintroduced Space Break. Decoupled mode is now hold a button by default rather than toggle, although I'm assuming that you can just, you know, change that to however you want. Uh, and the throttle is now more intuitive for physical throttles. They showed off some of the new work on Art Corp, its cities, and moons, Walla and Lyria. There are new building assets, crystals, ice models, and biomes. 
It's looking pretty cool. Every month we have a giveaway for a Star Citizen ship. For January, we have a standalone anvil. Carrick, the mighty explorer vessel. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and then comment on any of my videos released during the month. You can find more details in the comments below. If you don't have a gaming PC yet or you are upgrading, instead consider Shadow Cloud Gaming. They allow you to leverage the powers of the internet to stream a high-spec Windows 10 environment to any other PC, Mac or device like a smartphone or tablet. It is working really well in Star Citizen's 3.4 branch and be sure to use the code board gamer if you do decide to check it out to get a discount links below For those of you wanting to support the channel further there is patreon But and I will be looking for an alternative platform as well for people that have requested that But in addition or as an alternative to that at the moment There's the YouTube channel memberships literally the join button below this video or direct donations via the links below as well Thank you so much for watching guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me. Any feedback or opinions is greatly appreciated and helps guide the channel working out what content is a good idea to put out next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the verse.